Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. First off, I do apologize. I am about 12 hours late with this video. I know I don't really have a set time, but I've been releasing them every odd number day at 4 a.m. Work stuff happened and actually car stuff. But anyway, I'm back home, ready to talk about Seedry in deck number 355. Now, Seedry is... Uh, what is uh, white, blue, black, which is pretty much the Esper. It's the the artifact trio, if you will. I mean, yeah, red's not in there. But anyway, I've always loved Cedri. Very first thing I saw, or I thought of when I read her, what was this, uh, Commander 13? So they did Commander in 2011, and then they waited a year, because, like, I guess they didn't know it would be a big success, and then, so they skipped 12, and then with 2013, they gave us, and it was a pretty good set. But anyway, we got Seedry. Three mana, two, two. She turns a non-creature into a dude, and then she can give a dude, an uh, artifact creature, Death Touch and Lifelink. Now, my favorite card is to go with her is just Caltrops. It's amazing because this way you can kill anything that attacks at will. All you've got to do is animate Caltrops and give it Death Touch. And then whenever a creature attacks, Caltrops deals one damage to it and that damage is Death Touch and it dies. So that's where my mind went back, what, five years ago now? And so uh, I believe on, on Tapped Out, the description I've got is Cedric Caltrops and 98 other cards, which is pretty much what it was. Now, Cedric is an awful lot like the old, um, I guess the first time we saw it was the Karn ability, because I, I believe we saw Karn before we saw March of the Machines. Now, I don't have another Karn, but... I totally do have another March of the Machines. So, I kind of wanted a March of the Machines type deck. Now, in order to do that, there are certain things you can't do. Certain cards you can't have, like equipment. Because when equipment becomes creatures, bam, it falls off. It's not equipment anymore. It's just a walking dude that doesn't have any of those abilities. Because, you know, it says equip creature. And it also, March of the Machines, hoses the equipment Voltron deck, you know, um, all, all the white little, uh, equipment kitty cats don't like Mars of the Machines, but anyway, so what I wanted to do was I want to try to flood out as many art artifacts as possible, which led me down the Mana Rock Road, so we're going to peel through these pretty quick, because let's face it, there's a bunch, we're going to start off with, of course, Soul Ring, the Obelisk of Esper, which is, you know, essentially tapped for any color, like the Commander Sphere, Manolith. Yeah, you know I'm looking for rocks. I'm playing Manolith. The Ingot. The Coalition Relic. Uh, what are the three colors? Gilded Lotus. Of course, Sky and Charcoal Diamond. Then we get into the Guild stuff. Signet. Clue Stone. Key Rune. Talisman. Signet. Clue Stone. Key rune, talisman, signet, clue stone, key rune. There is no talisman for enemy colors yet because those only existed in Mirrodin. They haven't even been reprinted in anything. Keep waiting for the enemy color talismans. I guess we'll be waiting a while, which really kind of scares me about the new um, the Battle Bond lands because if they don't reprint those next year and Commander something, Battle Spawn, whatever. They're going to get expensive, and I would love to have the other five. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So we got a lot of rocks. So this way, it does multiple things. It speeds up our deck to help get the right colors, to ramp out, out cards. And, you know, in a pinch, we have an army there waiting to happen. Now, Let's look at, you know, some artifact creatures, some <laughs> honest to goodness creatures that are already, or some artifacts that are already creatures. Now, Foundry Inspector, because 
you, you know, everybody likes it when artifacts go on sale. So I'm also running the Sculptor, Joris Familiar. You know, I really thought hard about the, oh, the one from the dark, the five mana, um, all, all spells cost one. Anyway, thought about that one. Thought about the the one from Visions, Helm of Awakening. But uh, I like these because they only apply to you, but it's personal preference, I guess. There is, like I said, there's a bunch of cards that are not present that really probably should be. Here again, I feel like I'm a little light on the draw spells, but I don't know. We'll see. Chief of the Foundry is going to make all those animated mana rocks bigger. As will Steel Overseer. Now, Cedri only makes them artifact creatures till end of turn, but when the Overseer puts counters on each artifact creature, those plus one, plus one counters stay, even when it reverts back to just a mana rock, and the next time you animate it, it just has this counter on it. So, that's kind of cool. Now, I am not responsible. I am not a, a responsible enough magic player to not play Magister Sphinx in an Esper deck. Because, you know, I mean, we've got the colors, and it's the artifact theme. Uh, I just... But it kind of, sort of, doesn't... I mean, technically, creatures is not the theme. It's dudes that turn into... Or rocks that turn into creatures. But this was too good to pass up. You set somebody at 10... It's kind of, whew, kind of powerful. Now, the Agitator probably should be with the removal. But is he's really strong. I love that he's sworn Agitator since back from the Sharoon days. Oh, I said Sharoon. That makes me sad. Um, Steel Hellkite, also decent to removal. Big Daddy Dark Steel Jugs. In this was one of the early picks that I, I went to a, after the whole mana rock shenanigans. I, I went, well, you know what? That's a lot of rocks. I should probably be running the Juggernaut. And, you know, our Dark Steel Colossus. Now, to be honest with you, the Michelson Golem would have been perfect. Man, that Joker is skyrocketed in price. And I think the six or seven that I have, y'all already seen it in other decks. Now, let's look at other... Uh, I guess when I made the piles here, I, I called this pile uh, Artifact Shenanigans. Cranial Plating, because, yeah, it. I think this is the only equipment in the deck, but there again, like I said, it is just too good to pass up. It doesn't work with the March of the Machines, but I figure it's a 1 in 100 chance. So, But it's so powerful on its own. And I love the instant speed equip ability. I love that. It is just a blowout waiting to happen. That way you can declare all your attackers, see how the blocks go, and then at instant speed use the black black. Notice the... So the difference here is the equip cost is one. The equip you have to do as a sorcery. However, the black black colon, that's what makes it a black card for us EDH players, is an instant speed ability that you can do. So it kind of subverts the rules. If you're willing to play double and, you know, a little more specific of a mana cost, you can get it in there at instant speed and... A lot of rocks out there. It's a potential blowout, especially, you know, when Cedri happens to be swinging. I don't foresee that happening a lot, but it totally could. Now, with all of these rocks, we got to have a forge because, you know, nine mana is not that big a deal, especially with that amount of, of mana ramp. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. This is, I do believe, the last Dark Steel Forge I had. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't realize I had this one. This is. Um, one of the old decks that I had that I had put together that had a forge in it and hmm. so let's see mirror works mirror works is good an artifact deck right uh, blink moth urn now blink moth urn does help everybody 
but you know it kind of helps us more because that's just what we're, what we do unwinding clock with all those rocks is pretty decent I hear now we got that unwinding clock so we got the blink moth urn we got all these mana rocks we're generating a ton of mana just a ton of mana so what are we going to do with it uh, I mean I don't really have a whole lot of mana dumps per se but I've got a couple things like the planar bridge so we can just tutor something out out to the board, uh, which I feel like more than likely is if we draw the bridge, the first card we're going to get is the forge. I mean, if we don't already have the forge, that's what we're going to get, let's face it. Un unless you absolutely got to put somebody at 10. Now, that is a beautiful, beautiful instant speed thing there. If you see somebody, you know, player B attacking player C, and they're attacking for like 12 or 13 points of damage, you know you've got your Sphinx in the deck and you've got your bridge online. That's a player killer activation right there. That's eight mana kill a player. Because you search up your Sphinx, you pop it into play, you set the defending player at 10, and then the attack happens, goes through, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I'll, I'll do that. But now, also, another way to spend some mana is a Jinx Choker. Or, or, stay with me here. Now, with all this mana, it doesn't change control until the end of, of your turn. So at the end of your turn, you give it away, and you put a counter on it. Now, at the beginning of their upkeep, it's going to deal damage equal to number of charge counters on it. Now, you've got to put the counters on it on your turn. So you cast it, load it up with counters, give it away. Yeah, and we've got enough mana production to make it hurt. Now, they're only going to take it once, and they're probably going to give it back. So, yeah, it's probably just a one-shot deal. The idea here is to get somebody low enough to where you can just give them the choker, and during their upkeep, they die. Okay, so Tower Fortunes. It is reusable. It is draw four cards. Eight mana is a bunch. It's part of the tower cycle. But it's it's reusable card draw. And I mean, we don't really have a whole lot of card draw. I mean, uh, we've got this, we have Thought Cast, and we have Tidings. By the way, Tidings is draw four at sorcery speed. That's that's what we've got for card draw. Now, let's look at our other stuff here. Roar of Reclamation is going to get our our artifacts back when that unfortunate Shatterstorm happens, and, and some version of it probably will. Our Givian Restoration is a single target. Uh, the Ritual of Restoration just puts it back in your hand, but still it's a one-mana sorcery. That's pretty good. As is the Reconstruction. Now, history lesson here. This is not a beta reconstruction because reconstruction was not in beta. This is uh, a from antiquities. The very first printing of reconstruction was antiquities. But if you'll notice, there is no antiquities expansion symbol. There were none on this card. For some reason, the reconstruction just didn't get printed with the expansion symbol. I mean, it's not a rarity or anything. Every one of them is like that. But just something I thought because people are like, man, is that a beta reconstruction? No, no, it's not. Now, we have our Diabolic Tutor to hopefully go find the piece that we really need. Tempered Steel, because, you know, getting back to this, our dudes need, you know, our artifacts becoming dudes. Yeah, it's an anthem, but it's a double anthem, so that's kind of neat. I mean, speaking of anthem and things that are neat, a Chromos Memorial. Chromos Memorial is really sweet because, number one, a, we have a forge, which is going to make the memorial indestructible because, let's face it, if y'all have ever resolved an Acromos memorial, it becomes target number one. I don't care if you've got Scrib Sprites out there. They're a threat now. It is because red and black, I mean, your protection from 40% of magic. Yeah, slightly less because of artifact and whatever. But anyway, really good card. 
Now, I'm, I'm trying out this Echo Storm. I did make some adjustments to the deck because, gosh, I can't remember when I built these originally. So I looked through it and I, you know, th there was a bunch of cards I took out. Some of them just didn't make any sense. I mean, I had Levitation in here and some weird stuff. I like Levitation, don't get me wrong, but um, I don't know. I just kind of like this better. Now, let's, sure, let's run some removal. Infest, negate, I'm counting negate as removal because that's pretty much what it is. We got our mortify, utter end, and then our three board wipes in plague wind, Garrick's wake, and extinguish. Those are, I mean, normally pretty expensive cards, you know, seven, eight, nine mana, six for this one. But here again, I don't think mana production is going to be a problem for us. Now, Dispatch does not get enough credit. Now, it is white, and I don't know. It seems like I mentioned the uh, equipment kitties earlier. It seems like every one of them should be running Dispatch. Uh, I, I mean, it's a just one mana instant exile that creature with no downside. Yes, you got to have the artifacts, but in, in decks that care about it, it's gonna. It's not tapping creatures. It's exiling it. So, of course, we have Larry Nevin's disc and the Predator flagship. Now, the Predator flagship is another good mana sink. I mean, you can influence combat whether you want your guys to fly, you want some somebody else's guys to fly. The if you've got enough mana, there's nothing more beautiful than here again. Player B swinging at player C. I'm gonna make all of player B's attackers fly. Ha ha, now you can't block them, and they do their damage, and then you pop one of them. After damage, of course. Now, I do have two cheaty face cards in here because of the mana production. I mean, I have Debt to the Deathless and Exsanguinate. Those are not terribly original cards, I know, but with that kind of mana production, and I felt like it needed a little more something. Now, these next four cards is a kind of a, a thing I've been wanting to do. I don't know if this is the deck where it'll find the home, but we'll go with what it started off at. It started off with efficient construction. Because I'm like, you know what? I'm casting a whole bunch of artifacts. And a lot of them cost, you know, I mean, your mana rocks are twos and threes. But eh, it's a uh, it's really neat. So, efficient construction. Cast an artifact, you're going to get your Thopter for your trouble. Hey, that's neat. And then I saw mechanized production. Now, mechanized production, I, I don't know that we're going to choose the Thopter, but hey, we could. We might as well. Sure, let's choose a Thopter. So we're going to, every upkeep, we're going to get another Thopter. And plus, we're still getting doctors for artifacts we cast. Don't forget that. And then, if we control eight or more of the same name, we win. Man, at the beginning of your upkeep. So naturally, that led me to, hey, let's have another upkeep. And then that led me to, let's have another another upkeep. Sweet, right? That's just the twisted sense of how my mind worked. So now we're going to go through the non-basic land, which is most of them, because I sit here and I have eight basics in the whole deck. Okay, first we're going to go through, I guess, black-white, apparently. We've got the Sanctuary, Cave of Coilos, Scoured Barons, Basilica, Guildgate. Now let's do blue-white. Guildgate. Cove, Irrigated Farmland, Meandering River, and that brings us to Blue Black, Underground River, Backwater, and the Guild Gate. Uh, I do have uh, some, some search lands here. Now, obviously the Terramorphic and the Evolving, as well as the Esper Panorama. Oh, there's a blue-white one that I missed. The Refugi. The three color lands, of course, the Sanctum, 
Command Tower, the Spire, whoop, Spire and the Promenade. My box is getting full. I don't normally have this many. And then now I'm running the seat because to up the artifact count. Now we've got cycle lands, you know, because like I said, we're light on, on draw. The Baron Moor, Secluded Step, Sandbar, and then the Remote Owl. Most of the deck is, in fact, blue, you'll notice. Well, that is what I've got. I have eight, eight basic lands here. I do appreciate y'all watching. I do apologize that it, it is late. As soon as I, I finish recording, I'm going to upload it. So maybe I won't be. Uh, yeah, I'm already half a day late. Ain't it? Well, anyway, thank you for watching. But right now, I think we're going to shuffle and cut.